This happens far too often. I get a nice big hit on my rod, I run to it, set the hook, the hook is gone, the fish is gone, I have to retie the entire rig. It's a real pain in the butt. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a fishing rig that addresses this problem. It's a really awesome hack and I know you guys are going to love it. Every time I get my hooks cut off, I have to retie an entire rig. That is just such a waste of monofilament line. That's just such a waste of line and everything. If I could just retie that one little part of the hook, that would be really optimal. So that's why I think this rig is really awesome because you can just really quickly change that out without having to tie up a whole new rig. It saves you time, it saves you money. This rig is really easy to tie, but you gotta really conceptually understand how it's tied first before you really do it. So just watch me do it first. I've got 25 pound line here. You can use whatever thickness you want, but I want the main line to be thicker than the branches that come out. Because the branches attached to the hook, that's what the fish are looking at. If they can see the line, a lot of times they're line shy, they don't wanna bite the line. They don't wanna bite because they see it's suspicious. So that's why this rig is really awesome is because you can tie a light arm but have a heavier main line. So if you're fishing around things that have, you know, sharper structure or things that might cut you off, the first thing we're gonna do is tie the bottom sinker. This is called a clip swivel, a barrel swivel. Cause this clip will clip right into a sinker. I'm gonna tie this at the bottom and we're gonna just do an improved clinch knot. If you guys don't know how to do this, this is how you do it. Put your finger through here. You just twist it up about six times. Then that hole, that loop you just made, put it right back in there. You'll make another loop, feed it through there. And then just pull. Now we want the leader line to be about this long. I'd say about four feet, five feet. The first step is we're gonna get our leader line. The second step is we're gonna attach our clip swivel onto the end. The third step is we're gonna attach the two-way swivel to the top. And I'm using the exact same knot as I was using before. All right, we're almost done. This is the main line. Now here's the cool part. This next part, we're gonna tie an overhand knot about 12 inches down. So instead of just one, you're gonna go through it twice. 12 inches down, there's the knot. There's the, the swivel, knot. Now we're gonna do the same thing one inch away from it. So we're gonna have two. See this? Now, we're gonna do the same thing, except right here. Tie two more. See how there's two knots about an inch and a half, two inches away from each other? We've got that done twice here. We've got it all evenly spaced. And now I'm gonna show you how to tie the hooks on. Now the really cool part about this is if your hooks get bitten off, you can just tie another one up really quick. You don't have to retie an entire rig. You just keep attaching it back to this thick line. When it's too thin, sometimes it gets bitten off with your hook. This is a nice thick line that won't get bitten off as easily. And then you can just keep changing out the hooks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our main line to the two-way swivel at the top. And then we're gonna attach a pyramid sinker to the bottom. And this is our rig. Sinker, we're gonna put our hooks here. All right, here we go. Now the snood lines, we're gonna tie it with 15 pound fluorocarbon line. And now I'm using these circle hooks. These are size one circle hooks. Size one is a good size because it's good for big fish and also small fish. It's good for smaller baits. And we're just gonna tie it on here with a snell knot. Now, for the arm, I kinda want it a little bit longer so that it can kind of flow in the surf nice and, you know, naturally. So I'm gonna tie it a little bit longer. This is the really easy knot to tie now. We're just gonna make a circle and then tie an overhead knot. Keeping that loop nice and small up here. There we go. Now look, I can tie a million of these up really quickly and just have these on my rig spool right here. Look at this knot real quick. There we go, that's our second snood. 
I'm gonna tie one or two more so that in case anything happens, I can just really quickly change out my stuff. All right, I'm gonna go real slow to show you guys how to tie this knot. We're gonna put one line through. Make sure you have enough room on the tag end. It's okay if you have a little bit extra, right? Then we're gonna make a loop. Then we're gonna pinch it like that. You see this loop right here? It's along the shaft of the hook. Now we're gonna take our tag end and we're gonna go around this loop five, six times. Keep it tight. Now this tag end is gonna go right back through that loop. Now we're just gonna slowly pull both ends. See that? Now for this knot up here, we're gonna double the line over and make a loop. And then we're gonna make one more loop. And this time we're gonna twist this finger twice and pull this first loop through the second loop. You might wanna slow that down or go back and watch it again, but it's actually really simple. You're basically just doing an overhand knot. All right, now let me show you how I attach it to the line. All right, you see these? In between each of these knots, we're gonna put the snood, we're gonna put this circle, put the hook through that circle, and then we're gonna pull it. So that now, this is attached to here. It can't move from here, all right, you see that? And it can also freely spin around without getting tangled on itself. This is a real big game changer for us because first of all, if it gets bitten off, I can really easily replace this hook. Second of all, fluorocarbon on the outside and tie it with monofilament on this, on this line. And that saves a lot of money just because you're not using fluorocarbon for both. Um, it can freely spin all sorts of rigs that work. This is just a really awesome one I wanted to share with you guys today. Now I'm gonna take one more of these and finish out the rig. See that? Now look at how it freely spins here, look. Now come on and let's bait up and get fishing. All right, time to bait it up. First of all, take a look at this rig. I don't know if you can see it perfectly, but it's not gonna get tangled. It's, it's looking really nice. We're gonna put these sand fleas on. See these live sand fleas? And we're gonna hook it just like this. Now I'm switching it up a little bit. On the top, I'm gonna use some of my salted baits. These are our salted mussels that work really well in the surf, on the pier, on the jetty. Thing is, for it to really hold, gotta get bait elastic. This is our bait elastic. This is good because it holds your soft baits like clams, mussels. Oops. So with the bait elastic, you're just gonna wrap it up and it holds the bait onto the shank so that little fish can't peck it off and you won't be able to cast it off it's just a really efficient way of fishing so you don't lose out on bait and lose out on fish. You see how secure this is on here now? All right, let's give it a cast. <laughs> Another big fat whiting. That's great. Oh yeah, we're on another fish. Ooh, this is something a little bit bigger. I'm hoping it's another big juicy whiting. Woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. Look at the way their mouths are shaped. It's so perfect to just inhale one of these sand fleas. We doubled up on them. I think there's some bait under there? <laughs> what do you think that is? I wish I brought my sand flea pump, I mean my, my pump. Whoa.
Ooh. Yeah. It's a good one. Oh, it's a shark. It's a shark. Oh, oh shoot. Just bit it off. Last second. This little guy could bite my line off. That's crazy. This is a perfect example of how when a shark or something like a bluefish bites your line off, well, I guess I could just tie it right back on here. But if it got bitten off any higher up, we could just literally switch this line out like this. Since this is not actually tied on here, just unloop this, take this off, and it's back to this, right? I have this that I tied up earlier. That I could just take just loop it right back through. And all you have to do is make sure that the loop is in between these two knots, like this. And we're ready to get back into action with a new hook without having to tie anything. And that, to me, I think is worth the rig itself. The convenience of that is really awesome. This time I'm going to put a piece of shrimp on top one I'll put a piece of sand flea on. It's a great thing to use multiple kinds of baits too because you never know what the fish want. Sometimes you'll catch different kinds of species using different kinds of baits. Ooh. There's just nothing like, you know, casting your rig out there and have no idea what you're going to bring in. I've already got enough fish for dinner, so everything here is a bonus. I just hope it's another one that I can uh, fillet up. Ooh, another whiting. What do you think? This one looks kind of small. Should we let this one go or do you think this is a good size? What do you think, Aaron? Okay, we'll let this one go. When you're fishing, it's not good to keep everything you catch all the time. If it's a little bit small, the saying goes, let it go, let it grow. Just let them go so that they can grow to the appropriate size. Then next time you'll catch them, it's good for dinner. Come on! Ooh, bluefish! So that's probably what bit my line off earlier. Little bluefish. These guys are the things that bite your line off all the time. If you take a look, look at these teeth. Well, you can't really see them because these are this is a little baby guy, but they're really sharp. And they always cut my, my hooks off. Now that's a huge problem because every time I get my hook cut off, first of all, let me let this guy go. Every time I get my hooks cut off, I have to retie an entire rig. That is just such a waste of monofilament line. That's just such a waste of line and everything. If I could just retie that one little part of the hook, that would be really optimal. So that's why I think this rig is really awesome because you can just really quickly change that out without having to tie up a whole new rig. It saves you time, it saves you money. This is good. Lots of fish here today. Whoa! That's a big whiting. Yeah! I think because this light line, this is only 15 pound line, the water is looking really clear today. They're very unsuspecting of this line and they just really grab that piece of bait and they don't really think about it too much. Whereas if you have like a, say you had steel leaders on there or you had really thick line on there. I'm not sure that the fish would be biting as frequently. Yeah! 
Yeah, there we go. It's just one after another. It's one after another. Woo, still cut the bait. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to tie this rig up and watching me catch some fish with it. If you like our videos, our specialty is to help you guys get on fish. We love beach fishing and that's honestly our passion here. If you wanna be a good beach fisherman or you wanna start getting into beach fishing, check out my website, heyskipperfishing.com. I got a ton of awesome things for you, including a bunch of already tied up rigs that all you gotta do is just tie it on your hook. All you have to do is just tie it on your line, cast it out and start catching fish. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed learning how to tie this rig up. I wanna do more of this kind of things for you guys. Just let me know in the comments below. See you guys next week. Oh, nice. Another big whiting.